بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله So inshallah today we're just going to do a muqaddima or introduction into the benefit of seeking knowledge in general uh, The book inshallah that we were going to start next week is called Ta'deem uh, al-Ilm or making knowledge great uh, sanctifying knowledge glorifying knowledge having you know holding knowledge great in your heart by Shaykh uh, Saleh al-Usaymi and he is a scholar in the uh, in Medina in, in Riyadh and he studied with some of the great scholars the reason I chose this book is that it's very like summarized and brief and the meaning is very deep so there's other books about seeking knowledge that are like volumes, you know, because it's an important subject that the scholars have written about in detail for us to um, go upon a path that's beneficial, that'll save us time, like how we should study, what should we study, um, how to have the manners of studying, how to have the respect of the teacher, how to have the respect of a student, um, who t how to occupy your time, all these type of things the scholars have written about for a student of knowledge in order for you know, to make your path easier in seeking knowledge. And I'm just going to talk about the three main reasons we, uh, as Muslims, should seek knowledge, inshallah. Um, first and foremost, it's obligatory upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Muhammad, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لذنبك. Know that there is nobody worthy of worship except Allah and seek forgiveness of your sins. So knowledge, seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim, right? Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَسْأَلْ أَهْلِ ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask those of knowledge if you do not understand. Another command for us to ask knowledge, to seek knowledge, right? The first ayah that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was what? اِقْرَأْ اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ Read in the name of your Lord, right? The only thing that the Prophet ﷺ was asked to make dua for, for an increase in, in this dunya, was what? Yeah. Knowledge. In which surah? In Surah Taha, Allah commands the Prophet ﷺ to say, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِ عِلْمًا Say, O oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Right? Not from dunya, not from wealth, not from offspring, not from, you know, whatever, but knowledge. That's how great the knowledge is. Uh, also, we know that from the shurut of La ilaha illallah, you know, just your shahada to be correct, you have to have knowledge, right? The scholars have put seven main requirements for your shahada to be correct. العلم واليقين والقبول والانقياد في الدريم أقول والصدق والإخلاص والمحبة وفق الله لما يحب. They say for the 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 key of tawhid to work, you have to have like the seven edges on that key for it to open the door. The first and, and most important is ilm, knowledge, you know, knowledge and certainty, acceptance, obedience or compliance with the sharia, uh, sincerity, uh, uh, follow, uh, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, loving the shahada, and al-ilm uh, wal-yaqeen wal-qabool wal-inqiyad al-sidq, truthfulness, right? All of these things being together the seven requirements of la ilaha illallah. Uh, first and foremost, the point of today that we're talking about is knowledge. If you say in a court of law that you're a witness for, you come and bear witness, but you have no knowledge of that situation, what is that called? Like somebody subpoenaed you as a witness, you go to the court and you, and you testify, but you have no knowledge of what you're testifying to. False testimony. In, in Islam, shahadat al zur It's one of the greatest of crimes to bear false witness. To testify is something you have no knowledge of, right? So imagine when you say, La ilaha illallah. You know, there's no one worthy of worship except Allah. This is the most important testimony any person can ever make in their life. But if that person doesn't have no knowledge of La ilaha illallah, how is that testimony going to be accepted? Right? That's why when it comes to the grave, you know, when the angels come to ask, there will be some that were apparently Muslim. And they will, angels will ask, Who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who was that man that was sent to you? And they will respond with, Ah, ah, 
I don't know. I used to hear something and I used to repeat it. You know, these were Muslims, supposedly Muslims in the dunya, but when the time they didn't never had no knowledge of the deen. They didn't really know who their Lord is. They didn't know who their Prophet ﷺ was. They didn't know what their deen was. So basically they, they were hypocrites and faking it throughout the life. And when the time of judgment comes, when the time of the questioning in the grave comes, they are unable to answer because they had no knowledge. They did not apply what they were supposed to apply to their lives. You know, so ilm, knowledge, seeking knowledge is obligatory. Um, the Prophet ﷺ also said in a hadith narrated by Ibn Majah, طلب العلم فريدة على كل مسلم Seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. You know, so man and woman, young and old, it's obligatory upon you to seek knowledge. For at least the obligatory deeds, you have to know what the shahada is, the arkan of iman, how to offer salah, you know, how to make the fast correct, how to give zakat, zakat charity properly, how to make the hajj. The five pillars, you at least you should know the ahkam, the rulings behind them, and how to do them correctly. Right? So seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. That's the first and most important reason that we should seek knowledge. The second reason, and there are many reasons, but I'm just mentioning three for brevity's sake, is that it is um, full of blessings that you seek knowledge. You know, every time, if you look throughout the Quran and see so many ayat praising the people of knowledge, Allah says, "Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illallah wal malaika." That Allah bears witness to His oneness and the angels and those who have knowledge. So look at this great level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting in the scholars, those who have knowledge. And then He says, The ones who truly have khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, proper fear and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are the ulama, those who have knowledge. Right? Right? Allah will raise in ranks amongst you those who believe and who have knowledge. He raises them high in ranks. Also, if you read in the Surah of um, Surah Naml about Suleiman alayhi salam, you'll find uh, the story, you know, of the, the throne of Sheba, right? How the jinns told Suleiman that I will bring you her throne before you can come, you know, get up from your place, before you can get up from your throne. I'll bring you her throne t- from Yemen all the way to, you know, the uh, Palestine or the, the Sham area. And the one who had knowledge, Utul Ilm, many people don't know, but in most of the tafsir, it says it was a scholar from the students of Suleiman. He said, I'll bring you, and he did bring the throne before Suleiman can blink his eye, right? Because he had knowledge. Look at this. We still haven't reached that level yet in, in, in the technology that we are in to be able to transport something basically in the speed of light almost. You know, but this was done so many years ago through knowledge. The, na- the metaphors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says we, we draw in this book in the Quran, you know, the only those who, who uh, understand it are those who have knowledge. Al Alimun. Right, so so many parables in the Quran and metaphors that people without knowledge they cannot comprehend, they don't understand, they don't get the full benefit of it because they lack knowledge. But those who have knowledge they can understand the Quran deeply, the words of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. بل هو آيات بينات في صدور الذين أوتوا العلم. They are uh, clear ayat in the hearts of those who have knowledge. Those who have knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them with his ayat to carry around in their hearts, in their chests, with them wherever they go. This is the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who have knowledge. And there are many other ayat. The Prophet sallallahu said in authentic hadith, May you read Allahu bi khayran yufaqihu fid deen. Whoever Allah wants good for, he makes him knowledgeable in the religion. And the scholars have derived from this that if Allah does not want good for you, then he does not he makes you ignorant in the deen or he does not let you be knowledgeable in the deen. We seek refuge in Allah from that. Mm. So, seeking knowledge is a, a, a sign that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants good for you. You know, coming inshallah to like lessons, you know, to, that we can study together and learn about our deen. Inshallah, this is one of the uh, pathways to knowledge that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has seed favor upon you to do. You know, many people can now be going to party at the mall, watching fireworks, but you guys came to Alhamdulillah seek knowledge. Inshallah, so that's a favor that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has bestowed upon us. Also, 
the Prophet ﷺ said there's no jealousy except for two things. The one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him knowledge and he is teaching the people. And the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him wealth and he spends it for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? It's, had, it's a permissible form of, of jealousy uh, to have for these two people. Not that you, do, you know, wish f- you know, that would be taken away from them. That's the haram form of jealousy where some people they see a car and they're like, why does he have it? I should have it. That's the haram. You're not supposed to have jealousy like that. But in the sense that, oh, he's, he has so much knowledge, I wish I can be like that and have knowledge too so I can teach the people or, or get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, I wish I had mon- money like that. May Allah bless him so I can spend on the poor more or I can help the causes of Islam more. Right? So it's, it shows how great these two things are. And he, st- he started with knowledge. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ سَلَكَ تَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا سَهَلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ تَرِيقًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Whoever goes on a path that he's seeking knowledge with, Allah will make a path to paradise easily for him or for her. Right? What more would you want to have an easy path to Jannah? What greater blessing can you have? Also, the Prophet ﷺ said that when you go on a path of knowledge, to seek knowledge, whether it be, inshallah, to like halaqahs, like this or to open a book and study about the deen or listen to cassettes or whatever path anything you can consider as a path to knowledge he says that the angels in the skies and the 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 ants in the ground and the fish in the ocean they all make a dua for you you know it's an incredible amount think about the oceans how large and vast they are 80 percent of the world's um, uh, size is taken by Ocean, why water? Right. And all those fish in those water are making dua for you as a seeker of knowledge. Ants, I think there's something like one million ants to each person in terms of numbers, right? So how many millions and millions of ants are making dua for you for you going to seek knowledge? You know. And the angels, we don't even, <laughs> we can't even comprehend how many angels. The Prophet said, "There's not a hand sp- span in the skies except it's taken by the space of angels." There are some angels that from the time that they were created until the day of judgment, they did not lift their heads from sujood. There's angels that go, 70,000 angels go into the Bayt al-Ma'mur, you know, above the Kaaba, every single day never to return. Imagine from the beginning of time until now, every single day 70,000 angels going. And these angels are making dua for you, for seeking knowledge. And then the Prophet said, when you get together and study the book of Allah or study about the deen, the angels come down and they wrap you in their wings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends down His mercy upon you. These are all such great blessings in and of themselves are sufficient for us, inshallah, to go and seek knowledge. Any one of these hadith that I mentioned or ayat is sufficient for us as a blessing for us to go and seek knowledge. So we should strive... For the second reason, to get the blessings and the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seeking knowledge. The third point, um, it's kind of a just a practical reason, is that it's better to be knowledgeable than to be ignorant. Right? هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are those who know equal to those who don't know? From the beginning of history until now, can you give me any civilization that praised ignorance? Like if you go and read the annals of the Greek works or the Persians or the Romans and they said, oh, this nation was so great because they were stupid. Never, you will find nothing like that. <laughs> but if you go and, 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 and you look at all these great civilizations, they all praise knowledge, whatever the knowledge may be. Because it's better to be knowledgeable in anything than to be ignorant. right? So what more um, benefit is there to be knowledgeable in our deen? You know, it doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are in the dunya, if you're ignorant about the deen. You know, if you have a PhD in every single field, but you are ignorant of your Lord and ignorant of your religion, ignorant of your Prophet ﷺ, they were not going to help you on the day of judgment. You know, if you can have both, alhamdulillah, that's the best of both worlds. But the most important thing is to know your deen, know your Lord, know your Prophet ﷺ before it's too late, because this dunya is temporary. Don't be fooled by it. You know, every single day, it's getting closer for us to our death, to our grave. We're going forward to that grave no matter what. The world is running away from you. Why chase it? Right? The akhirah is coming towards you. That's the, tr- the permanent abode. You'll stay forever in there. إِمَّا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَإِمَّا إِلَى النَّارِ 
in Jannah, in Paradise, or the Hellfire. May Allah protect us from the Hellfire. You know. So our goal is to seek knowledge of our deen, to lift the ignorance of ourselves so we can worship our Lord correctly. Right? That's the niyyah of us seeking knowledge. And um, this is the reason I wanted to start with this book, because like in everything there's a path. You know, so we should know how we're going to get on this path of knowledge. What's the correct way and what, we, what the tools we can take to help it make it easy for us to go upon this path. And you want to have this path, it's from the cradle to the grave. You never want to stop seeking knowledge. No matter how knowledgeable you think you are, we're not that knowledgeable. We can always learn more. The Sahaba, عنهم, they never gave up on seeking knowledge. Ibn Abbas, you know, the, the, the son of the, the cousin, the nephew of the Prophet Wasallam. He was called Hibr uh, al-Ummah, like the, the, the scholar of the Ummah. He devoted his whole life to knowledge. Even when he was old and blind, and he couldn't see, he heard that certain Sahabi had a hadith. He would go all the way to that Sahabi's house and wait, you know, in the sun, at the time of Dhuhr, until Asr, until the Sahabi came up from his nap, so he can ask him a question, right? This is the respect of knowledge. And some scholars, they would travel for, for months just to get one hadith. Alhamdulillah, we have like so many resources and books and, and videos and everything, but do we take advantage of it? You know, we will be asked about that. So I want, inshallah, to go and continue. A brief story to encourage us and show how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts up and rank the other. I, I don't know if I mentioned it or not. يَرْفَعَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُرْتِ الْعَمِلَ رَجَاتِ I did the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifts up uh, those who have belief and knowledge he lifts them up in ranks so there was a young man young boy orphan boy uh, called Ya'qub I don't know if you know his story so he was basically you know his father had passed away his mom was very poor they didn't have that much money at all and she would send him to be an apprentice with a tailor you know she taught him what she could and she sent him to the tailor to be his apprentice so he can like make some stipend to bring the money to the house, you know, to have them some food to eat. So it was seen that he was going to this apprentice late every day. And then he would come home late as well. So the mother had him followed one day and she found that he was on the way to the apprentice. He would stop at Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu rahimullah's class and sit there and learn, right? And the uh, the tailor himself actually complained to the mother that the son you know he keeps coming late and he's not going to be able to like, give him his stipend or he can't keep working with him because you know he's he's messing up his business basically so the mother was furious you know and she went to the sheikh abu hanifa rahimahullah and said you know my son we we're we're poor we have no money the only money we get is through the stipend that the tailor gives my son so we can have some food to eat right and he said to her you know he saw some greatness in the son, this little child that was so keen to learn knowledge. He said, let him be. He may eat from the, um, it's like a special dish they had in that time, made from like the richest of pastries with uh, pistachio uh, fustuk, like the pistachio um, oil on top of it. And she was like laughing like, yeah, right, this little orphan kid is going to eat from this dish. You know, there's no way. Like, you know, Stop taking, making fun of me. And she said, and the Imam Abu Nafi said, you know, regardless, let him be. I will pay whatever the stipend the tailor was giving you, I will give you double. Because Imam Abu Hanifa, he was a big businessman. So he said, I'll take care of it. Whatever he was giving you, I'll give you double. Just let him study. Because I see in him some, some you know, uh, proficiency for knowledge. And so she said, whatever, if you can, you can pay, then I don't mind. And so the, this young boy, Yaqub, stayed with Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. And he became one of his best students. And then, when he got older, he was actually chosen by Harun al-Rashid to be the head judges of the whole Muslim Ummah. At that time, the Muslim Ummah spread from Spain all the way to um, China, basically. Right? It was huge. And he was chosen as the head judge. And you may know him better as Al-Qadi Abu Yusuf. The, 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 the judge Abu Yusuf he was one of the great scholars of the Hanafi fiqh and the madhab and he was the head judge of the Muslim ummah at that time right? and it says in this narration that he was sitting with Harun al-Rashid the Khalifa of the whole ummah you know this poor little orphan boy that had nothing not even enough food to eat now he's sitting with the ruler of the whole Muslim empire and this dish was brought to him that he hadn't seen before 
and he ate from it and was so delicious. And he said, you know, what is this dish? And the man told him it was such and such from the, you know, the fustuq. And Abu Hanif, uh, Abu uh, Qadi, Abu Yusuf remembered what Abu Hanif had told his mother all those years back. You know, so we say, يَرْفَعَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعَلْمِ دَرَجَاتِ Allah, He lifts and ranks those who have faith amongst you and those who have knowledge. Look how He took him from a poor orphan boy and put him as the head judge of the whole Muslim Ummah through knowledge. Al-A'raj, He was like crippled. Uh, they said like deficient or blind in one eye. Um, not the most attractive person. Very, very poor. All the things you can think about, he had nothing from the dunya. So his parents, they put him in, the, in, in Mecca to study knowledge. And he sat in the haram from the morning until the evening studying until he became what they called Imam Ahl dunya like the scholar of the world at that time, to the point where some of the Sahaba and some of the other you know, great scholars from around the world would come and sit at his feet in Mecca to learn the deen because the knowledge lifted him up. You know. So this is the greatness from seeking knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives to those whom he wills. And we need to learn inshallah to seek knowledge correctly and to have the proper intention. And that's the goal of the book that we will um, start next week inshallah. So this is just a brief introduction and if there's any questions or suggestions, tafaddalu, uh, you're welcome to ask or suggest. Jazakumullah khairan. Can you repeat the second reason that you see? Yeah, so the first reason was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us and the Prophet has commanded us. The second reason is because of the blessings that you get for seeking knowledge, the great rewards for seeking knowledge. And the third reason was what? Knowledge is better than yes, knowledge is better than ignorance. And Allah says, Qurrabbi uh, zidni ilma in Surah Taha. Oh my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And that's a good dua that you should make too, that you ask Allah. So from the, one of the, the, the ways to get knowledge, first and foremost is ikhlas, having sincerity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't seek knowledge to debate or to show that I'm more knowledgeable than you or to like, you know, be a shaykh or a shaykha or, you know, popularity. Your main your reason is to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to lift the ignorance from yourself, to clean your heart, so that you can worship Him correctly. Like Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ خَشْيَةً That knowledge is having fear or proper fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's true knowledge. You know. That will give you, when you, when you have that, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهُ يُعْلِمُكُمُ اللَّهُ When you have taqwa of Allah, Allah will teach you. So first and foremost is to have ikhlas, sincerity. Second, like the brother reminded me, is to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sincere dua, Oh Allah, I am ignorant, please teach me. Rabbi zidni ilma. Right? The, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he used to say, Allahumma allimni bima yanfa'uni, wanfa'ni bima allamtani wa zidni ilma. Oh Allah, <coughs> benefit me with that, with, w or, or teach me th with that which will benefit me, and benefit me with that which you have taught me, and increase me in knowledge. That's another authentic du'a the Prophet used to make. Ibn Taymiyyah used to say, he said when he was like, you know, very difficult for him to, to answer a question, he would go into sujood and say, Ya Mu'allima Adam, allamni, Ya Mufahama Suni Ma'ana Fahimni. Oh, the one who taught Adam, teach me. Oh, the one who taught or made help Suleiman to understand, let me understand. And he keep continuing to make that du'a till he understand. So this is another key to getting knowledge, to make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third one is not the, the the second one is a hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said authentic hadith, and the third one was like a dua that one of the scholars used to make. Yeah, but it's taken from the Quran in the context. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ You know, كلها that Allah taught Adam the asma. So He says, "عَلَّمْنِي You know, like like the one who taught Adam teach me, and then فَفَهَمْنَاهَا Suleiman We we made under was we made Suleiman to understand. That's also in the Quran. So He took that ayat. He said, Ya Mufahim as Fahamni, the one who made uh, Suleiman understand, let me understand. Right? So that's where it's derived from. And there's many other du'as that we should you know you can make, but uh, the Prophet has taught us many du'as to ask for an increase in knowledge that we can also that's the most important ones to, to, to do. Um, and thirdly is to try to act upon what you learn. You know. That's an important time. Every time you learn something, try to act upon it. You learn that Prophet used to pray the Qiyam al-Layl. So try to 
you know, before you sleep, if you can, pray some rak'ahs. Or if you can get up early before Fajr, to pray some rak'ahs. You know, the Prophet used to fast extra, sometimes try to do the extra fasting. You know, the Prophet used to smile in the face of his companions, smile more to people. You know, the Prophet used to have good character, have good character. You know, all these knowledge, all this stuff is for us to act upon it. It's not just some theoretical thing that we study to, to become scholars and preach, but not acting upon it. You know, we want to put that ilm into amal, knowledge into action. Right? And this is just some of the uh, the keys. Also, uh, fourthly, is teaching it or calling others to it. This will help you in increase in knowledge. The more you can, you know, so we have sincerity, dua, acting upon it, and then calling others to it, practicing it, and preaching and calling people, teaching others, you know. Anything you learn, inshallah, you try to teach it. If you can, to your family, to your siblings, to your friends. You know, you learned a hadith that's beneficial. Go in and spread that hadith. You know, that way the knowledge will be firm in your heart. You know, so these are some of the pathways to help us attain knowledge. Inshallah, I think the book will discuss some other ways as well. But, Jazakallah uh, for the questions. <laughs> Which one? The Arabic? Uh, the For the Islamic studies or the... Um, so it's online. I'll send the link again. If you can give your information to Sister Sumeya, if you don't, if you're not on the WhatsApp group, and I'll add you to it, inshallah. Um, and I'll send you the link. So that's the Arabic one. I haven't seen a translation of it yet, so I'm going to translate it myself, inshallah. Um, if you want another book that will be like an aid, I think it's called The Etiquette of Seeking Knowledge by Bakr Abu Zaid. It's translated in English, so we'll have the Arabic and the English, I think, in the book. Um, that can that can the etiquette of seeking knowledge yeah it's available by pdf online and i think the bookstore should have it as well if you want to order it that's a, a nice book to have you know as accompaniment to this one it's a little bit longer that's why i didn't choose it and um this one the sheikh actually had it intention for the students to memorize it you know that's why he made it kind of brief uh, but we don't have to memorize it but just to understand it i think is div- is, is is good inshallah No, that's an important question. So yes, uh, we're talking about when I'm t- all these ayat and hadith and um, the advice and stuff is related to religious knowledge, knowing about the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? So the Imam Al Ghazali, rahimahullah, he says that you know knowledge is of three main types, basically um, knowledge of an ilmu billahi, knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and knowledge of the things that will lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowledge of the the dunya or the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the most important ones are the learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what will lead you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know that's what these knowledge is that's what's obligatory upon you so you're not obligated to learn for example um, engineering as you are obligated to know what your deen is there is, I'm not going to get into details, but they're called Fard Kifaya, which is where, you know, the if there's a deficiency in certain fields, it's obligatory upon someone from the Muslim Ummah to go and, and, and uh, study that type of knowledge, right? That's a different type. But Fard, uh, the Ilm of the Deen, is for every Muslim in general. Like, you cannot just say that, oh, I don't need to know how to pray, or I don't know how to do fasting, or I don't need to know how to make Hajj, right? Or the, what the Shahada means or what Tawheed is, what my Iman is. You have to have knowledge of these things. That's where it's different. And they say, like some of the scholars too, that no one sins against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except through ignorance. Right? Either you don't know something is haram and you fall into it, that's why, of course, ignorance, or you don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly enough and you sin against Him. You know, that's what that's out of ignorance as well. So knowledge is the cure to that ignorance. Right. And we studied in the first book we went we finished um last you know, the end of the um spring season we finished the uh, the book by Ibn Qayyim. And the beginning of that book it said that ignorance is the sickness and knowledge is the cure. Right. So knowledge is the cure for many of the diseases of the heart, many of the problems of society, and the more a person has knowledge of the deen the more goodness he can bring to the world. Right. So, um, in a sense, yes.
you'll be the more you know the more you're accountable because you have to you know uh, you'll be questioned if you acted upon it right but that's not an excuse like you don't say so I'll just stay ignorant it's better for me to be ignorant so I don't be accountable no you'll be accountable for not learning as well right so the more that's why it's important when you learn something is to uh, to practice it the best you can right but even some scholars say even if you're not able to practice it learning it with the intention is also a great form of worship you know there's many stories of some of the great scholars of Islam they were on their deathbed and they called for someone to come and read to them a hadith book or a book of knowledge and like they would be asked why are you doing this and you're about to die you know don't don't he said they say because I want to you know that yeah why are you doing this and you're not going to be able to even act upon it he said I want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I am seeking this knowledge with the intention that if I was able to I would act upon it you know so they th- they saw knowledge as a form of seeking knowledge as a form of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Ahmed said and many of the imma of the scholars of the salaf they said that seeking knowledge is one of the best forms of worship you can do after the obligatory deeds right like after the shahada the salat siyam, seeking knowledge so even one said that to, to, to learn one chapter of knowledge is better than praying the whole night prayer from the after Isha until Fajr yeah. obviously as students of knowledge you want to do both to pray some in the night and to seek knowledge but just to show the point of how beneficial knowledge is you know if I were to tell you you know you come and meet me somewhere at such and such time and do this and I'll give you a million dollars or say a billion dollars okay I'm sure every single person will be there before like waiting for hours and hours to get that million or or if I said billion and he would probably spend the two nights there waiting you know for a billion dollars right the Prophet said to go to the masjid and learn two ayat from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than the dunya and everything in it right just the ayat from the book of Allah but people don't realize <laughs> you know what is a billion dollars compared to the dunya it's nothing you know how many billions and billions you can have of the, <laughs> of the whole dunya you know just try to think of how long it would take you just to explore the state of Virginia I think if you had your whole lifetime to explore like walking in every single spot of Virginia you might not be able to finish so imagine the United States or Africa or China or all these other countries in the world how long it would take you to explore and that's only 20% of the world is land uh, imagine the other 80% of water how long it would take you to explore two eyes is better than all of that <laughs> so it's this perspective in Spana. The more you learn and understand, the more you realize, you know, how temporal this world is and how more vast the akhirah is. You know, and we'll maybe mention in the future, inshallah, but it's just to, to realize the, the greatness of what we have and to appreciate it. You know, we take it for granted, but it's really one of the greatest gifts. It is the greatest gift that anybody can have in this dunya, and we should not take it, you know, for granted. And so we'll stop here inshallah. Subhanakallah wa hamdika ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa ilayk. Um like I said we'll be up we'll add you to the WhatsApp stuff too. So if you ever have any questions in the meantime, you know, feel free like just send me a message. Even if it's late, don't worry, like if I if I sleep I'll turn on silent and then I'll answer you inshallah as soon as I'm able to do so. Uh, in the Arabic class or the Islamic class. So Jazakum Allah khiran and uh Arakum inshallah yawm al thneen al qadim. If not sooner, I'll see you next Monday, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum.